This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Touch Diamond 2. As you guessed, this is the follow-up to the original Touch Diamond. It maintains the same overall glossy black look in the front, but it gets kind of metal treatment down here with very teeny buttons and no D-pad. And the back loses the faceted surface texture of the original Diamond. This one's flat, but it's still very glossy. As you can see, it does pick up fingerprints but it stays flat on the table, which is nice. The 5 megapixel camera up here with an autofocus lens. That's an upgrade from the original Diamond 2, and it does take better pictures. On the side here we have speaker grill. We've got the stylus here. Mini USB sync port combined with the headphone jack. Here are the volume controls. Just a little bar here, a rocker. Very clean looking. And the power button up top. Still minimalism, competing with the iPhone in its lack of buttons, too. The front we have call, send, and end buttons. We've got the Windows Start Menu key, which brings up HTC's customized Start Menu, like the HTC Touch Pro, too. They've taken over quite a bit of Windows Mobile and put their own skin on top of it. You can select which applications appear here, and you can scroll. If you just want to see all programs, you see them in a list format with big icons. And this is very easy to control. HTC's done a great job of controlling the touch screen with these Windows Mobile devices that have resistive touch screens. So TouchFlow 3D, as you can see, it looks basically the same as it did in the last generation. It's just gotten a lot more responsive and a lot faster. Where the old one would lag sometimes, this one doesn't. You've got your people screen. We can add photo caller ID favorites here, threaded messaging, email accounts, and each new message will appear as a cute little envelope if you have that. Web browser, which is Opera Mobile. We're going to take a look at that in detail in a moment, but what's interesting here is we still have the YouTube shortcut for YouTube playback, but instead of just having bookmarks down here, they've added what they call push pages instead, which are less useful, unfortunately, than bookmarks for most of us. You've got the full calendar screen now, like the Touch HD, and they've added stocks. Here's your pictures. As you can see, you can flick through pretty quickly. It's nice. You launch the camera by tapping here, or the video recorder by tapping here. Music player, which is lar largely unchanged. You can scroll through your tracks here. The weather, which we'd show you, but it seems that AccuWeather is having a little technical difficulties right now, but it's the same weather that you used to seeing. It's pretty cool. And a variety of settings are available here. And one of the few times you actually get to see regular Windows mobiles if you hit all settings. And then you've got the regular settings icons that you're used to seeing on older Windows mobile devices. Let's take a look at this compared to the Touch Pro 2, which is its sibling with the slide-out keyboard. Obviously, it's going to be thicker because it has to accommodate that keyboard, as you can see. It is thicker, but not, like, hugely thick. Back of the Touch Pro 2 has a 3.2 megapixel autofocus camera, and it has this speakerphone built into the back, something that this lacks. Both have a stylus and the mini USB port at the bottom. And we'll take a look at that. Like so. Both have the same 800 by 480 pixel resistive touch screen and both run the same version of TouchFlow 3D. And both have the zoom bar here where you can zoom in and out on web pages, Word documents, and things like that. Compare it to the iPhone. This is the new iPhone 3GS. Which looks identical, of course, to the iPhone 3G. This guy's a little bit smaller, but thicker. Again, not that much thicker, but the curves on the iPhone make it look really thin. Whereas this has a more angular and blocky design. 
This has a GPS. It has Wi-Fi. You can use Google Maps or any mapping application of your choice that works on Windows Mobile 6.1, which is what this runs. It has Bluetooth with EDR. You can use it for tethering and for FTP and with car kits. And again, we'll take a look at the Opera web browser. This is an edge-only phone because this is the import model. So we're running on Wi-Fi right now to speed things up a bit. We're looking at the BBC homepage, which, as you can see, scrolls easily. And if you want to zoom in, you use the zoom bar here to do that. It's reasonably easy to control zoom that way. You can also just double tap to make things look really big. HTC's phones tend to be business-oriented devices. Obviously this one's about fun, a little bit more. We're going to take it the YouTube player. That's standard with most of these HTC phones. And we will just take a look at something from the pick list and check it out. We're streaming over Wi-Fi right now. It does a fine job. It's a little bit jerky because this happens to be a handheld camera piece. You can also play locally stored videos. It does a good job. You know, HTC isn't known for their video acceleration, but we've thrown videos that are about 650 kbps at VGA resolution, and they play just fine on the device. You can store them on the micro SD card, which is underneath the back cover. You don't have to take off the battery, but here's the micro SD card slot right here. That out. That goes in here. Here's the battery, and the SIM card is underneath there. The Touch Diamond 2 has a built in GPS with a GPS. That means it has a GPS and it gets assisted satellite or location information rather from cell towers. The 800 by 480 pixel display is just like great for viewing maps. So here we have Google Maps. And you can see. There's a lot of information available on any one screen. The phone has an accelerometer, but like the original Diamond, you can see it's, it's not being used in Google Maps. It's only used in a few locations, like the media player and the web browser, which is too bad. But there are hacks available to get landscape mode working in all applications. The thing to keep in mind about the Touch Diamond, too, is it, in terms of initial specs and features other than the higher resolution display and the, and the better camera, it doesn't seem like such an improvement. But the real improvements here are in TouchFlow 3D themselves and, and the performance. You would think that this had a faster CPU in it because it's just so much more responsive, as you can see, scrolling through and controlling things right now. And that higher resolution really does make for a much better web browsing and video playback experience. This is a quad-band unlocked GSM phone that will work with any GSM carrier, which means AT&T and T-Mobile in the U.S., generally speaking. It has 3G only on the European band, so you're going to be using it on Edge here in the U.S. We're hoping that some carriers pick this up so you can get it at a subsidized price, and so you can get it with 3G. Currently it sells for around $550 from importers. And this is the HTC Touch Diamond 2 from MobileTechReview.com. Visit our website to read the full review.